Greetings and welcome back to class here at csigmathtutor.com. Today we are talking consumer arithmetic again, and in this lesson we are going to be focusing on simple interest. We have two objectives today. Those are to define and use the term simple interest, and our second objective is to solve problems related to simple interest. And for that, we're going to be using some past questions from the CSEC. So first, let's talk about what simple interest is. Um, whenever you borrow money from a financial institution or you invest money in a financial institution such as a bank, um, it is likely that when you borrow money that you're going to be charged interest. Also, if you use a savings account, you are going to be earning interest on your saving account, savings account. That is, the bank will give you some money as a payment for using your money to do uh, to do their business. So the simple interest is a quick and easy method of calculating either the cost of borrowing or the amount of money that the financial institutions such as bank would give you on your investment as um as interest. It's just, it's a very very quick and easy method to give you an idea of how it works. In real life, it's a little more complicated, but this method gives you an idea of how it works. And so simple interest has some terms that we need to deal with. One, the principal, and the principal is the money that you either invest or borrow. So whatever money that is, that is the principal or the principal amount. The rate or the interest rate is the percentage at which the interest is calculated. And when we say interest, we mean money, the rate at which that money is calculated to you. The time, in this sense, is usually in years. So the formula assumes when you calculate simple interest that you're using years. So if you're not using years, you have to modify that formula to, to, um, to account for that. And the interest, of course, is the money that you either earn on your investment or the money that you are charged as as um as a cost of borrowing so the formula that we use for calculating simple interest is prt which means principal times rate times time divided by 100 this is when we use the rate as a percentage over 100 and in some in some instances where the rate is written as a decimal then the formula is simply interest is equal to PRT. In this version of the formula, the rate is given as a decimal. In this version of the formula, the rate is given as in percentage form. So what we're going to do now is to use this, this formula to answer a few questions so that you get a good idea as to how to go about doing calculations um, involving the simple interest formula. These questions will come up on your paper two in question one. Usually that's where they appear and they also appear on the multiple choice paper. So either way, you should um, become familiar with working them out because they're likely to pop up on both papers. So the, here we have Mr. Mitchell deposited $40,000 in a bank. It earned simple interest, and the question normally tells you that it's simple interest, and the, he earned simple interest of 7% for two years, and so we are to calculate the amount he will receive at the end of the two-year period. So let's apply the formula. The formula says the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. P R T over 100 um, gives us the interest. So let us substitute these numbers. The principal, that's $40,000, times the rate the interest rate that's seven percent and the time is two years and we divide that by 100 and in doing so we realize that we are multiplying 400 by 14 so we have 400 here seven times two 14 by 14 and that gives us um five thousand six hundred dollars uh, now this is the interest payment All right, so this is the interest payment. The question says calculate the amount he will receive at the end of the two-year period. Notice that the question did not say calculate the interest 
that he will receive at the end of the two-year period. Those little things matter. So because it says calculate the amount, we are going to take off 40000 now and add the interest payment, so 5600 And so the amount that he will receive at the end of the two-year period would naturally be his principal plus the interest that is accrued to him. So that would be $45,600. That's what he would get at the end of the two-year period. So this is how we use the formula. Let's look at another example. Here we see Anna puts $2,500 in a bank and left it for two years. At the end of the two years, she found that she had $2,700. So she got some money on her investment. In other words, she got some interest. So here we are going to first calculate the interest earned. Well, she started with $2,500 and got $2,700. So the interest um, earned, which is a simple calculation here, would be $2,700 minus $2,500, which tells us that um, she got an interest of $200 on her account. And the second part is to calculate the annual rate percent paid by the bank. Sometimes they call it that, APR, annual percentage rate. Sometimes they just say interest. Otherwise, they just say interest rate, same thing. So we are going to write down our formula, PRT over 100 is equal to interest. Now, what do we know? We are supposed to calculate the interest rate. So we know the principal. The principal is 2,500. So let's write that down. Times the rate, we don't know. That's what we want to find. So let's leave the R. The T we know, the T is two years. And divide that by 100. And what we know is that at the end of this period, she gets $200 in interest. So we can do a division here, which tells us that 2 times 25 is 50. So 50R gives us 200. And to get our R, we simply divide. So we have 200 divided by 50. And that gives us 4, which tells us that the annual rate of interest is 4%. So this would be part 1. And this would be part 2. So in the first instance, we calculated simple interest. In this one, we are looking at using the same formula to calculate the rate percent. Now, um, let's look at another question still. Simple interest on a sum of money invested at 3% per year for two years is $39.75. So we are told that the interest is this, and the time is two years, and the rate is 3%. And our job is to find the principal, the money invested. That's the principal. So we write down our formula. PRT over 100 is equal to interest. Now, what do we know from this formula? We know the rate. We do not know the principal. So let's leave principal there. Rate, we know. That's 3%. And time, we know. That's two years. So PRT over 100. And we know that when this calculation is run, what we get is $39.75. So here we can do a quick cross multiplication. So we have here that 6P, 3 to 6, 6P is equal to 100 times this, which gives us 39.75. And so to find our principal, what we need to do is to say principal is equal to 39.75 divided by 6. And that will give us. Um, six hundred and sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. So just plug that into your calculator and get the answer. So here we are using the same formula to to um calculate the the interest invested. Notice there are other versions of this formula that you can write. Um. Personally, I don't see the point of writing them out because you can use the same formula to get whatever answer you want. So there's a version of the formula where it says principal is equal to 100i over RT or rate is equal to 100i over PT, etc. But you do not need to swap and learn these formulas. 
when you can simply take your values and substitute them into the original formula. So in which case you do not need to know four formulas, you only need to know one. And this one formula will do everything as long as you substitute the numbers um, where they're supposed to go and solve it like a, like a simple linear equation. Um, let's look at our final example here. Using the same formula, a man deposited $800 in his account at a bank which offers 6% simple interest per annum. Um, part 1 says how much interest would he receive on, on his $800 after 9 months. So we note our formula again. Part 1, our formula is PRT over 100 equal equal to um, interest, all right? Now, in this question, our principal is 800, our rate is 6%, and our time is nine months. Now, you can write that nine months as nine over 12 because it's not a full year. So we could write it this way, over 100. And when we do that calculation, you would get the interest and do your calculations and get your answer. Or you could also write it this way, 800 times 6 times 9 over 100 times 12. So you could put that 12 in the denominator. And once you do your calculations there, you would end up with, punch it in your calculator, there. Um, it is the same thing as 8 times, as 4 times 2. And 2 times 6 gives you 12. That divides out, so 4 times 9 gives you 36. So this person, um, this man would get $36 for the 9 months. Importantly though, remember that when you have 9 months, you cannot write 9 in the formula because that the formula assumes that when you put the number there, it's years. So it calculates it as, as years. So if, if it's months, then you need to put those months over 12. And you can write a fraction like this as your time, or you can write the 12 in the denominator as well. Second part of the question um, is asking us to find, to find the time. How long would it take for the $800 to increase to 992? Well, if you're going to move from 800, 800 to 992, uh, it means that he's going to get, um, subtract this, he's going to leave us with $192 in interest. So essentially, the question is asking, how long will it take for the account to generate $192 in interest? Same formula, P, R, T over 100 equal interest. And so we know our principal, our principal is 800. Our rate is 6%. And our time, we don't know our time, so we put back T over 100 and that is equal to 192 because that is what the interest is or that is what the interest would be in that time. So we can do a division here, 6, 8, 48. So we end up with 48 T gives us 192. And to find our time, we simply divide 192 by 48. And that will tell you that your answer there would be four years. So this is how you use the simple interest formula. Remember, simple interest is just a very, very basic method of how you go about calculating the cost of borrowing, that is when you borrow from a bank, or a simple way in which the bank works out how much money to give you on your savings and deposits. In, of course, you can go to csecmathtutor.com to find more questions to practice. Go into the past paper section, go into the practice paper section especially, and you will find many more questions that you can practice with. Until next time, keep working hard and 